It is only the second half of February. This year, the bees could set off very early on the first mass flight. This is especially important in the life cycle of the bee colony. Almost all the swarms workers are hurrying to empty the stool filled with fesses to the limits of the colon. During this time, they also try to remember the position of their hive again. Now is the third day since the first flight this year. Bees still learning the location of beehives. Those who still have a problem with a certain return home help the navigators workers, revealing the duffer's glandular fragrance. To understand their work, we must slow down the passage of time and look closely at what the bee is doing to guide the others to the outlet, the so-called navigator workers. We see that it is holding the ground firmly. It waves its wings, but it does not fly away. It directs the airflow caused by the movement of the wings towards the abdomen, like a fan. At the end there is a gland that produces beacon navigation pheromones, the smell of a swarm. The gland has a brownish opalescent color, and is on the dorsal surface, before the last turgid of abdomen. It is carried away by the rush of air and attracts lost or less certain workers. This helps them very well in directly navigation. Bees who once had a problem finding their own hive, when they find it, become navigators for a few minutes to help the others with the return. The workers, who now stand behind the navigator, remember the location of the outlet and the smell of the swarm. And here is another worker, even less confident than her sisters trained in full summer. She is a guardian, apparently the telephone annoyed her a bit, so she lets her know that we are going away. Meanwhile, hard work is already taking place inside the hive. Pollen collectors have started their dances showing other workers the location of the source of this precious food at this time of year. The first pollen collected after the winter is one of the strongest stimulators for the assembly of eggs by the mother bee, that is the so-called brooding. Let's see the dance of pollen picker in slow motion, i.e. a time-lapse movie. The orientation of the honeycomb is like the screen, a film recorded a bit from up direction. Their worker begins to roll up her abdomen after passing a piece of plaster. The vertical direction up means, fly under the sun. Any deviation to the right or to the left of the upper vertical means the same change of direction towards the sun. The collector is circling successive circles, however, it is clearly visible that she only wraps her abdomen when her head is directed 90 degrees to the right of the vertical. How does this translate into the space around the hive? It is very easy to determine the place that this pollen collector visits. It is enough to enter the direction from which the sun shines on the map, and draw an arrow deviated from this direction by the angle which the worker dancing on the comb has leaned back. The tempo of the dance determines the distance which should be traversed in the given direction in order to be in the place shown by the worker. During the day, the sun moves, which is why the angle of the dance in relation to the vertical of the patch will change. It is mid-February, so it is not surprising that the water reservoirs still cover a thin layer of ice flows. Nights are still cold. Most of the plants are not yet awakened to life, and completely to flowering. All the more puzzling, what can flourish at this time of the year? Following the clue of the pollen picker, we quickly find a blossoming hazel. A dozen or so trees were covered with shimmering inflorescences. At 14 degrees Celsius they are a great source of pollen for bees. The workers, in the already warming sun, are twisting on these inflorescences, messing with the pollen grains of this plant. This worker already has dust pearls formed in the baskets and will soon return to the hive. However, before it does this, it will show us how it forms its golden balls. Bees cover a layer of hairs that have been slightly electrified by the airflow during the flight. Therefore, they attract pollen grains, which abundantly pour hazel. The worker walking around the inflorescences then clings to them, then starts to fly. During it, worker hovers in the air and combs herself with pollen brushes, moistens the feet with honey brought in the hive from the hive. 
Such slightly moist grains are put on baskets and thus form shiny pollen balls that glisten slightly with honey. This activity is repeated many times, and when they are ready, it returns to the hive, dances later to show others where and what it found. Blooming plants are very keen on bee visits, they help to spread pollen from a tree to a tree. Plants often actively help by firing pollen in the direction of pollinating insects. Hazel is a tree that due to the time of blooms counts more on the wind than insects. No less sure if you can say so, it is very happy about this visit.